to take that serious now. You see, I really like VR gaming. I really like VR. Hi, hello, Gritzi. I really like VR gaming, and especially in the last few weeks, VR shooter games. But as you just saw, it's really hard to aim with just loose controllers in your hand. So I decided I want to create a virtual reality gun stock. So it gives you more immersion and more stability. So then I did some research online to see what kind of VR gun stocks you can buy. So none of the gun stocks I found online were really what I am looking for in a gun stock. So being a tinkerer, I decided to create my own. I started out by simply taking my controllers into a game and having a camera recording me and uh, my plan was actually to measure all the distances and how I hold a weapon. Yeah, like every time I did a photo, the measurements were completely different. But then I remembered, somebody already gone through all of that work and research and put a lot of time and effort into it. You could say hundreds of years. And that's gun manufacturers. I want to take some measurements of this real gun stock and then design my own. So the way I go about big projects like this, because it is very complicated. I want to have a lot of features in it. It should be super lightweight, it should be adjustable on the fly, it should look nice and it should really grab onto my controller so I can really play without the fear of losing it. It is a very big project with a lot of moving parts to it. So what I normally do in that case is I start on the basics. Like I decide what features have to be there and start from there with like a very rough and ugly design and then iterate my way up. First order of business would be to take some measurements on this one because when I hold this one, I already see, okay, it is very stable. My arm is in a good position because you shouldn't do that, you know? and I can aim well, I can lower the gun, I can pull it up and the aim is right in my face again. That's actually what I want from a virtual reality gun stock. I will simply borrow some of the work of the engineers that engineered those kind of gun stocks and will start with my first iteration. So follow along. So this is the first prototype I came up with now. As you see, I just drawn up something very bulky. I removed some material to not make it too heavy and I chose like very little info to make it light. But it has basically all the core functionality I want this gun stock to have. First of all, we have our shoulder pad like in our weapon. It's actually made out of TPU rubber. So it's very soft to my arm. It has already some adjustability. This one up here, for example, is my cheek guard. So basically, when I have my gun stock in my hand, then I can rest my cheek on here and find a point of reference. But I wanted to have it adjustable, not just this little piece of metal. You want to rest your chin on it? No. Chin guard. I wanted to have the height of my cheek guard adjustable. Really? <laughs> I want to have the height of my cheek guard adjustable and that I achieved with a compliant mechanism. Compliant mechanism means that you have no moving part, but you still get some mechanical movement into it. In that case, by simply flexing the PLA, I did this satisfying little 
Here I can adjust the height of my cheek to adjust it to different weapons. Down here, this little bulky lever you can see actually pulls a pin out of the middle of the part. And this means I am now able to adjust the length of my gunstock. Let me show you that quickly. So this is a very early prototype of the front of the gunstock I want to use. So by simply pushing it in here, you can already hear it ratchet. And you simply press that lever, you pull to the desired length and you let go. And it just simply clicks in. And I think it's really, really good because it's super bulky. I can even use it while I still have my controller in my hand. So by simply pressing the lever, the plastic flexes and pulls a pin out of the middle. And this adjustability is super nice. That's exactly what I was looking for. This is, as I said, my first prototype and it already fulfills the basic functionality of a gun stock. And I could simply leave it like that. By the way, like, it doesn't look like much yet, but it will later. And you have the chance to this time win one of my gun stocks. I will explain at the end of the video how you can enter that. And PCBWay was nice enough to sponsor a fully working gun stock for us in selective laser sintering. So that will never break. You can throw it against the wall. So stay around till the end of the video to have a chance to win that. Let's proceed with functionality. So online, I actually found a fully 3D printable gun stock that was not adjustable. So it had a pretty neat feature. It had these little cups for your controllers. So you simply slide your controller in. You have to take the correct one, of course. And it slides in and it grabs your controller basically all around. So I really like them because they fit like a glove. You simply like pull them in and they're in there. But when I tested them, I actually got fatigued fingers down here because you really have to grab it so it doesn't like simply slip off because the gunstock is of course heavier than your controller. It will simply always try to slide off. So my idea is to simply use the battery lid itself as a connecting point to the gunstock because you can simply put them on top and they click in and they're very securely on there till you press this button and they slip off. So I thought it would be ideal if I simply can take off my real battery lid and slide it on as an attachment point. So this one is actually one of my tries in that. It is a model you can download on Thingiverse. I will link the artist down below. And it has a 3D scan of the battery lid and he made it into kind of like a gun handle already. And I thought that's a neat idea. That's exactly what I need. So I took the lower part of my gun stock and just simply attached it to it. But as you can see, the fit is let's say suboptimal. It goes in there, yes, but it doesn't click in. It always fell out like that. And it's hard to even eh, get it in. So after fiddling around with that a while and looking online everywhere for 3D scans of these battery lights in better quality or even a cut drawing from the manufacturer, I didn't have any success in that. So I decided to make my own 3D scan of it. Now that we successfully 3D scanned our battery lid, we have STL data now. But as you saw, I worked in CAT, so I want to have it in STEP. And converting STL to STEP or to usable CAT volumetric data is pretty hard. It's called reverse engineering and there is a multitude of programs that promise automatic conversion, but they don't. Like I tried out everything, even like the paid version with Fusion where you give it to the cloud and it does like all these calculations. It failed all the time. It never gave me any good data. So after looking around for a lot, I actually found a hidden gem. The program is called Quick Surface and you can download the 30 day trial on their website. And you can simply drag and drop your scan into it. I already put my scan in here 
And after that, I would suggest, depending on the count of your triangles, to go and do some polygon reduction. The less polygons you have, the easier it is for the algorithm to interpret. But even with huge data set, it works just awesomely. So I reduced mine up to 17,000 triangles right now. And the scan looks nice. So all I have to do actually is to click on auto surface I choose my target quad count, which is like the target of knots, because this program will actually really nerp your surface. It will not just convert every facet into a 3D data set for cut. It nerps your surface, so it resurfaces your whole part. So I put my target count here on like, let's say 5,000, because I have a lot of detail on the backside, and I hit preview. And you see, within seconds, it generated all these little nerves, and you can see the quality is just amazing. You can also switch to a heat map where you can see the max deviation it has. Yeah, there you have it. It's already converted. I simply hit OK, and it converts it into a step file. I would play around a little bit with the settings now because like as you see I have like all these little nerves. I want to have big nerves. Look at the big nerve dancing around. So after like three or four tries playing around with like surface smoothness and stuff like that, that is what I got. You see like those huge nerves that follow all the curvature? It looks really, really nice. But a lot of programs give you that in their own render. But then if you try to import it in a cat, it completely messes up everything. So let's do that live together. I open up my inventor. It loads the data. As you can see, it is a complete workable step file. We can now go on and improve our controller holder on the front stock. If you want to see a video about that program or about the topic of getting 3D scanning data into cut drawings, leave a comment down below. As you can see here already, yeah, it really doesn't hold on well. It's just PLA, or in my case, I even printed out of PETG to be more stable and to be able to just click it on. But the battery lid itself is so thin down here, even though I bulked it up a little bit, that it actually broke all the time. That's partly because, of course, if you see when I push my rod in and I place it like it would be placed, it has a lot of back weight. So when I put it like that, it would simply spin and break my attachment points. So yeah, I tried it out a lot because I thought, oh, maybe I can use different printing parameters and stuff like that. But as you can see here, like with all these prototypes, yeah, that didn't work really well. So we had a strength issue. Then I had an idea. I didn't like the cups because I have to hold on to the cups because it slides out. So that's why I came up with the battery lid idea. So the sliding, like I, I liked it a lot and it's very comfortable, but it's just like the sliding out motion, which I hated. So then I decided to simply combine both of those ideas. And I actually came up with something that works pretty well. And I think it is usable. So I combined both of those ideas the battery lid click in and the cup into one part. This one is simply the cup combined with the battery lid inside. So I still get the feature of clicking my controller in, but I also get the feature of the added strength down here and the cup I can simply grip. So I think with this one we can proceed. About attaching the stocks to each other, as you can see, there is a little round recess here, and this is actually meant for a magnet. So the idea itself comes from a little 3D printable gun stock I found online, as well as the cups. I will link them down below, as I said. And the idea is that you have these hexagons, because hexagons are the best of guns. You know, hexagons are the best of guns. And one side has a magnet in, and the other side has a metal plate, and you simply bring them together, and they snap together. And now I have a fully working gun stock, but I can also, while using them, separate it to use my hand to loot or to grab, to reload or whatever, and then simply blindly find my way again because the magnets will simply adhere to each other. I already told you I want to improve the weight of my gun stock and I also want it to look fancy and I will use generative design for that. So the thing is how generative design works is basically you just give him whatever you want to keep 
and delete all the rest and let the program decide how the part will look like. It will apply different forces and it will basically follow the stress in between those parts and add material to it. So it grows very organically and it always kind of look like roots in between. I really love that design. I already put up a little test, you could say. So I deleted everything that I don't need. Like it's pretty easy to use Fusion for this and it actually produces awesome data. So you simply choose here generative design. It will ask you what kind of study you want to do. In here, you simply follow the buttons on on the top from left to right and now we go to the first area so here the green one says basically mark everything that you want to keep in the final model contact surface for our shoulder pad it is the contact surface for our ratchet chin guard and it's the contact surface for our front so we mark these three bodies and press ok they are marked green now in the program after that in red we can give him restrictions so we can say this red part will not be within the design you produced to me but it has to fit in my design we mark that part of the stock we have we hit ok and now it looks like that we have green and we have red so in these load cases we can now decide how our part will be loaded when we use it don't go and do two less of a load like in a gunstock you could easily say like oh yeah i only press that way so i only have one load it will mess up the whole algorithm give it all the real loads you can think of and angle them and stuff so basically i push in with like about five kilograms not more i would say it could also happen that like i catch myself while bringing that up or just this because like if i hold it like that there is a force supply of gravity basically it does gravity itself, but it's also that I want to add like a little bit more of a force. So I simply add on the top here, I add another load of about, let's say one kilogram, 10 newtons. Also, I have rotating forces. If I rotate around, the mass of it spins. So let's give it a rotating force. That's easily done by simply like clicking here and change your type to a moment. And let's say this is about 30 Newton. But also, because the force is applied from the front, I will simply choose this surface as well. And I will say this, the force is applied with the lever. So I choose that and I move my force over here. And say like, okay, this one is about 20 Newton as well. So here, go wild. With every force you can think of, just apply it wherever you think it will apply. After setting up your forces, we now can go to the next step. So the next step in manufacturing, I decide in what technology I want to calculate my part. It's not necessarily how I want to manufacture it. I mean, it would be good if it's the same. So the program can actually take your manufacturing or way of manufacturing into consideration while growing. So for example, if you choose additive and you give it constraints of overhangs, it will actually consider that while growing the algorithm. So I always go additive, of course, because I want to do it additively. And I can also tell him like my Z because I want to print it later like that is my manufacturing direction, you can say. And I can also give it the angle, like 45 degrees, because in, uh, I want you guys to be able to print it in FDM, and then 45 degrees is perfect one. And it has a minimal thickness of about one millimeter in my case. Okay, we simply hit okay on that. And now the next thing is materials. So we open up the material tabs, and here we now have to add all the materials we wanted to have. Simply choose plastics and I say PA12 in an SLS printer. And I also go to use another plastic, PET plastic. So now next thing you do, you click on this little like dashboard up here or a clipboard and it says everything I need for my study is here. Great. So I simply click generate and now you see that this one is done in the cloud you see it costs me 11 cloud points since i have a teacher's license for fusion i have unlimited cloud points but cloud points are not that expensive and the outcome is really nice but set up your data really well because it will cost you cloud points every time 
it generates something, no matter if you're happy with the outcome or not. Now it sends my study to the servers of Fusion and they will actually start to algorithmic grow my part. So let's wait for that and I will show you what came out of it. So the algorithm is ready. You will see like loads of these little icons or uh, like little previews here. You can simply open one up to have a look at it. And the cool thing I think is like you have a slider down here where you can load different iterations. Like basically you see here it's still bulky and then like you have iteration 19 and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And like the algorithm will grow new uh, attachment points and stuff like that according to your data. So I already finished it and I imported it into my inventor and this is what it came up with. It looks freaking beautiful. It looks like a tree basically and you should be able to print it upright. I've already gone ahead and improved the rest of my model. Ratchet mechanism I have down here because this one was just the first prototype, super bulky. And I did it small now, so it looks way more professional. It's still a compliant mechanism that bends on its own, but it has this little latch in here that latches into an upright position of the part. And also I changed the top ratchet mechanism. The whole thing now can flex, like you see over here. And I changed like the mechanism to slide in my shoulder pad at the back because I want to print it upright now. Also perfected the front gun stock or topology optimized the front gun stock. So I printed it in PLA, but thanks to our sponsor PSDB way, they were nice enough to print that for us in SLS PA12, which is an industrial strength plastic material that is manufactured by laser sintering because PCB way not only offers PCBs, but also industrial grade 3D printing. Okay, after all these iterations, I'm really happy with the outcome. I mean, you saw a little sneak peek already when I showed you how to do the whole generative design thingy, but prepare for the coolest gun stock you can't buy. Here it is. I love the design, I love the color scheme, and I love the functionality because I simply put in my controllers and they click right in and they not coming out again. And all the functionality I wanted to have is here now. As you can see, I still have my shoulder pad so I can rest it. I reworked our adjustment back here. So now it's like way smaller and smoother, but it's still big enough so you can press it while holding a controller and you simply press the little button in and you slide it wherever you want to go, you let go and it clicks right into position. And it actually has like a pretty neat range of motion. It goes from about here to here. So I can do very small guns and I can do very long guns. And depending on the length of my arms, I can adjust it. It also still has the compliant mechanism for the cheek rest so I can adjust the height. And of course, the feature I wanted to have, it's still separatable. So I can use my hands independently of each other. It's super light. The whole backrest here actually is about 71 grams in PLA and I printed it in selective laser sinter now. So now I can actually use my hands freely. I can also adjust the length of my gun stock however I want and I can separate put them together again. So simply like reload for example. I love the clicking functionality. So if you're here to win one of those, you simply have to write a comment down below why you should have that gun stock. It can be funny, it can be serious, it can be everything, but the highest voted or liked comment will win. So a little piece of advice, send that video to your friends and tell them to like your comments. So. Super happy with the outcome. As always, you will find the 3D printing data on my uh, Maker World account and also on my PCBWay account for you to print at home. All of that is 3D printable in PLA as well or PETG, whatever you want to do. And it's super ergonomic and nice to use. See you next time.